remember three years ago on my channel, I started a series called How I'd Write Cars 3, or I went over how I would personally change Cars 3. Now, since I did those episodes, my opinions have definitely changed, but for the four-year anniversary of my channel, I decided to bring back How I'd Write Cars 3 and conclude it. Even though I don't really have the same opinions that I did when I made the older episodes, I decided to still run with what I'd previously done, and now I'm getting closer and closer to the end of Cars 3, still making some more changes. So before we get started with this episode, if you haven't seen my previous episodes of the series, definitely make sure to watch them first or else you'll be completely lost as to what's going on here. I'll try to remember to put a link in the card, hopefully I remember that. But anyway guys, welcome back to yet another episode of How I'd Write Cars 3. We are almost done with this series, we only have two episodes left after today. Hoping to get it done by the end of the month. Today we're going to be doing the Florida 500 Part 1. Lightning and all of his friends are in shock, staring at Jackson Storm, now painted in Lightning's famous red with the Rusty's logo and 95 on his side. The first one to speak is Sally. Storm, but... But how? Mater's the next one to speak up. We did some digging into Sterling's past. Turns out he owns both Rusty's and Igniter. Not to mention he has ties with Miles Axelrod. Everybody is shocked. Sally speaks up again. You mean the guy from the World Grand Prix? Sterling laughs. <laughs> Whoever gave you that idea? Why would I ever have anything to do with that guy? He was a criminal. I built Igniter from the ground up and I bought Rusty's because I'm a billionaire. I have the money. Why not use it to own more than one sponsor? I mean, come on! Everybody is shocked. Cruz is the next one to speak. To think I worked for you, Sterling. To think I worked for you for years. Only to see you do this. Only to see you replace Lightning McQueen with Jackson Storm. Cruz, I already told you that I don't want to work with you anymore, alright? Just get out of here. You and Lightning and everyone, just get out. I have a new pit crew to move in here. Several pities, similar in appearance to the ones that worked at the Rusty's Racing Center, come in and begin to move Jackson Storm's items into the pit row. Also there are Ray Reverham, Laura Spinwell, and Jackson Storm's other pities, all getting situated, as Lightning and his Radiator Springs friends and crews have no option but to leave. As they're driving away, Lightning speaks. I... I can't believe it, guys. We lost. I did all this for nothing. There's nothing we can do now. Sally sighs. I'm sorry, Stickers. And I'm sorry too, buddy. All of the cars are completely down. Everyone starts apologizing to Lightning. I'm sorry this happened, man, says Ramon. It's a shame, honey. I'm so sorry that this didn't work out. Guido and I would just like to apologize, Lightning, if only things could have gone another way. With everybody completely defeated, Cruz turns around to face them. No, guys, this isn't how we should be acting. We shouldn't be down like this. We shouldn't be upset. Every obstacle is an opportunity. You need to be able to push through the negative to make it through to the positive. Lightning looks at Cruz. I don't see much positive here, Cruz. There are always positive aspects in your life, Mr. McQueen. Sometimes they might just be... Difficult to see. Sure, you might have just been fired by Sterling, but maybe this could be a new opportunity for you. Suddenly, a voice pipes up. It certainly can be a new opportunity. It's Tex Dynaco, with the King and Cal on either side of him. Latin and McQueen saw what happened to you back there. And let me just say, I have a new opportunity for you. Cut to the racetrack. All of the racers are lined up with Jackson Storm in front, Danny Suarez next to him, and all of the next gens behind him. At this point, just like in the original movie, the racetrack has been completely filled with next gens. There's not a single veteran racer left. The most shocking event of today's race is that Jackson Storm has taken over the Rusty's mantle from Latin and McQueen. Bob and Daryl are clearly a bit disappointed by this revelation as they announce what's going on. That's right, Daryl. Sterling has officially fired the legendary Lightning McQueen. 
a real shame as many racers and fans were excited to see him show up again. But alas, it seems that every legacy must one day come to an end. Bob and Daryl pause for a second as they see something that hasn't yet been revealed to the audience. Wait a second, Daryl. Are you sure about that? Suddenly, a car painted in a beautiful dark blue speeds onto the track. With a Dynaco logo on his hood and on his sides, the words Fabulous Lightning McQueen, with the number 51 adorning his roof. Matty McGear screams from the stands, Lightning! Lightning McQueen! The entire audience begins to roar in applause at the return of Lightning McQueen. I can't believe my eyes, Bob! It's Lightning McQueen, and he's racing for Dynaco now! What an amazing paint job! What an amazing turn of events! Natalie Certain is completely floored. I, I didn't see this one coming. We see reaction shots from all sorts of different characters from around the world. Red Lizzie and Sheriff are cheering, watching in Radiator Springs. Miss Fritter is knocking the cars in the Thunder Hollow bar around, going absolutely crazy to see lightning return. Finn and Holly, watching from inside their spy jet Sidley, are cheering at the return of their old friend to the racetrack. We see Francesco Bernoulli sitting at a bar, spitting out his drink once he sees lightning return on the big screen. And we see Chick Hicks, watching from his home, throwing a temper tantrum because lightning has returned to the track with the Dynaco logo. That should have been me, he screams. That should have been me, he begins to break down into tears. Lightning looks over at his pit crew, giving Sally and Mater an approving nod. Sally smiles at Lightning and says, this is what Doc would have wanted, stickers. Lightning looks up at the fan stands to see Luis Nash, River Scott, and Junior Moon sitting in them, cheering for him and Smokey drives up to Lightning's tool cart to begin coaching him. Through the headset he says, All right, Lightning, let's get this done. And that is where I'm going to end this episode of How I'd Write Cars 3. Next time we'll be taking a look at what's going to happen in this version of the Florida 500, and then after that there will most likely just be one last episode wrapping everything up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is probably one of my favorite ones that I've done, and hoping to get the next one out soon. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye now.